In this video for Math 98, we'll be looking at problems from homework number 2, covering section 12.1 in the book. That section is about rational functions. These are like problems 9 through 14 on the homework. In this video, we will be using the graphing calculator quite extensively. Maybe you remember from arithmetic that a rational number is a number that can be written in the form a over b where b is not equal to 0. For example, 3 fourths, or minus 5 over 15, or minus 24 over 3. Those are all examples of rational numbers. A rational function, f of x, is a function that may be written as the ratio of two polynomials, let's say p of x over q of x where the denominator is not zero. Now that's something we have to remember. Denominators cannot equal zero. Here's some examples. f of x equals one over x. This is a polynomial. One is a very simple polynomial. And x is a very simple polynomial. g of x, x over x plus three. That's also a rational function. And h of x, x squared over two x squared plus five x minus three. All of these are examples of rational functions. This is a new type of function that's going to be important as you progress in algebra. Now, you might remember from Math 93 that the domain of a function is the set of all inputs. Now, up to now, we've not really cared too much about the domain because you could always put any number in there. But that's not going to be true anymore. Let's take a look at this rational function, y equals 1 over x plus 1. Are all values of x acceptable? Well, certainly, if I put a number like 0 in, I get 1 over 1 over 0 plus 1, which, of course, equals 1. So that was acceptable. Um, and if I put, say, negative 1 in, I would get 1 over negative 1 plus 1. And what about that? That's going to be 1 over 0. And uh-oh, that's trouble, right? We can't let x equal 0. So we say that x is not equal to negative 1. So what is the domain of this function? Well, any number but negative 1. Typically, we will put an r with a line through it to mean all real numbers except for negative 1. Now, what I would like to do is draw a graph of this. And I'm going to graph this by just plotting points. And I'm going to use on my calculator the table function. Now, you can do this by hand. And maybe I'll do another one by hand. But the table function is a very useful feature of your calculator. Turn your calculator on, clear the screen, and then press the y equals button. I'm going to clear that by hitting clear. And then I'm going to say 1 divided by parentheses x plus 1. Now, it's very important to put the parentheses around the entire denominator. If I didn't, it would be 1 over x and then add 1. That's a little bit different. Now, the next step you have to do is set your table. So I'm going to do that by hitting second window. Then it asks you for a starting value. I'm going to pick negative 5, and I'm going to count by 1. So negative 5 is my start. This delta table means what you're going to count by. These should both, at least for now, be auto. Then you'll see the table above the graph key. I'm going to say second graph, and there we go. Now, what does this mean? Well. When x equals negative 5, so I'm going to go over to negative 5 here, y equals minus 0.25. So if this is negative 1, that's maybe about right here. And when x equals minus 4, y equals minus 0.333. OK. And when x equals minus 3, y is about negative 1 half. OK. And when x equals minus 2, y is negative 1. And when x equals minus 1, I get an error. Hmm. But when x equals 0, 
my answer is 1. And when x equals 1, my answer is 1 half. And when x equals 2, if I go down to 2, I can do that by going down to the bottom of the screen, x equals 1 third. And when x equals 3, x equals 1 sixth. So this is very interesting. I'd like to know what is going on here when I get closer to negative 1. Seems like when I get closer to negative 1, something should be going on. There are plenty of numbers between negative 2 and negative 1. So I'm going to go back to table set, and I'm going to start at negative 2, and I'm going to put point 0.1 in here. So I'm going to start at negative 2, and I'm going to count up by tenths. And I'm going to keep those in auto. I do second graph. And notice here, I have negative 2, negative 1. Negative 1.9 went down a little, 1.8, 1.7, 1.6, 1 1.5. But look what happens here, 1.4, 1.3. These are getting more and more negative. Negative 1.1, and I'm going to put that one in here, is all the way down at negative 10. And of course, at negative 1, we have an error again. I'm going to do my table from negative 1.1, and I'm going to count by 0 0.01. Well, this ought to be interesting. Negative 1.1, negative 1.09, negative 1.08. As I get closer to negative 1, look what's happening here. Negative 1.01, I'm all the way down at negative 100. It looks like this graph is going like this. Like it's going off down to negative infinity. By the same token, I'm going to look between 0 and negative 1. So I'm going to start at 0, and I'm going to go down by negative 0.1. Notice I put a negative sign in there. And I'm now going to go to my table. And once again, you'll notice as I get closer, this is 1.11, 1.25. As I get closer at 0 0.6, negative 0 0.6, it's 2.5. At negative 0 0.8, it's 5. At negative 0 0.9, it's 10. And if you look from negative 0.9 and you go down by negative 0.01, look what happens here. 10, 11.11 at negative 9.1, negative 9.2 is 12, negative 9.5 is 20. If I go down to negative 9.9, it's 100. So it looks like this is going up like this here. Now, this value at negative 1, this function has no value. But it seems to approach this line here, this line being x equals negative 1. That line is called a vertical asymptote. That's not terribly important right now, but it is something that will be useful later. To help us go back to y equals, there's my function. I'm going to set a window from minus 5 to 5, and I'm going to go from minus 20 to 20, counting by 2. So I can set my window like this. Now I'm going to hit graph. Does that look like my function? It kind of does, doesn't it? So there is my, what my function looks like. Now, rational functions, many of them have these asymptotes, and we'll be investigating them further later. But right now, let's go back to that idea that rational functions cannot have every number as an error input. For example, what inputs are these functions defined? Well, the only input, the only value of x that would give me a problem here is one that would result in a denominator of 0. So if x equals minus 2, that would give me 7 over minus 2 plus 2 which is 7 over 0, which again is a problem, right? So x cannot equal negative 2, but any other number will not give me a 0 in denominator. So we would say this is the domain, all real numbers, except for x equals negative 2. Now, you might be noticing that in order to solve this problem, all I need to do is find out where the denominator equals 0. So I'm going to try that approach on this one. Where does 3x minus 1 equal 0? Well, if I add 1 to each side, 
I get 3x equals 1 or x equals 1 third. So I can't let x equal 1 third. If x equals 1 third, I have a problem here. I've got a zero denominator. So my domain is all real numbers except for 1 third. Now, rational functions be complicated. There's no reason this has to be just a linear function. You might be able to know when does x squared here plus 9x plus 8 equals 0. Maybe you remember your math 94 and you remember how to factor this. Factoring is going to be important in this class. And if you remember how to factor this, this factors like this. Take a moment to check that. x times x is x squared. 8x plus 1x is 9x. And 8 times 1 is 8. Now, if you remember, if I'm looking for where this equals 0, that means either x plus 8 equals 0 or x plus 1 equals 0. Now, x equals negative 8 or x equals negative 1. This tells you that when x equals negative 8, that results in this being 0, which would result in a 0 denominator, which is not good. When x equals negative 1, that results in this equaling 0, which results in a 0 denominator, which is not good. So the domain is all real numbers, except x cannot equal negative 8 or negative 1. So those are some interesting problems there. Now, let's take a look at this problem right here. Let's complete a table and a graph to help us do that. Um, so I'm going to try to do this one by hand here. So I'm just going to pick some values of x, and I'm going to look at values of y. So notice that the domain of this is anywhere where the denominator cannot equal 0. So I have to know where the denominator equals 0. So the denominator equals 0 when x equals minus 3. So the domain is x cannot equal negative 3, or all real numbers except for negative 3. So I'm going to pick some numbers less than negative 3, like negative 4, negative 5, and I'm going to pick some numbers bigger than negative 3, like 2, negative 1, 0. And let's see, if I plug in negative 5, well, what answer do I get? I get the opposite of negative 5, which is 5, over negative 5 plus 3, which is negative 2. So the opposite of negative 5 is 5, and negative 5 plus 3 is negative 2, okay? Negative 4, the opposite of negative 4 is 4, and negative 4 plus 3 is negative 1. So that's just negative 4 there. If you want to, you can take 5 and divide it by negative 2, and that will give you minus 2.5. Might be useful for you to do that. If I put in negative 2, the opposite of negative 2 is 2, and this is negative 2 plus 3, which is positive 1, so that's 2. And the opposite of negative 1 is 1, and this is negative 1 plus 3, which is positive 2, so that's just 1 half. And at 0, we get 0. 0 minus 0 is just 0, over 0 plus 3 is 0. So let's just look at what we have so far. Drawing myself a graph. When x is negative 5, so I'll put that out here. Let me label these here. Okay, so when x is negative 5, we're at minus 2 and a half. So that's about right here. Negative 4, we're at minus 4. Hmm, so we're going down a little bit further. Okay. Negative 3, remember, we don't have a value at negative 3. At negative 2, the value is 2. At negative 1, the value is 1 half. And at 0, it's 0. Now, we can keep plugging in some values. You could plug in values that get closer to negative 3, like negative 3 and a half. Negative 3 and a half will give you 3.5 over negative 3 and a half plus 3 is negative a half. And 3.5 over negative a half is negative 7. 
Okay, so it looks like negative three and a half, we're at negative seven. So it looks like this is going down like this. And remember, at negative three, we have an, no value. And if I pick a value like negative 2.5, and I plug that in here, that would give me 2.5, again, the opposite of x, over negative 2.5 plus 3, which is 1 half. So 2.5 divided by 1 half is 5. So this sure looks like it's going up like this. So this kind of gives me an idea of what this graph might look like. Let's check this with our calculator. I'm going to clear out, go to y equals, clear out my graph, do minus x. Now remember, the minus sign is this right here. So minus x, always use this for your variable right there. And I want to divide that by, so I'm going to say divided by, parentheses, x plus 3. I'm going to set a window. That looks like a perfect window again, the same one I used last time. Then hit a graph. Here's my graph, and it kind of looks like my picture that I drew by hand. Okay, let's do one last example. Here's an example of a rational function, 6 over x plus 6. I want to complete a table and graph. This time, I'm going to use my calculator entirely to do that. So, my function was 6 over x plus 6, so I'm going to hit y equals, hit clear, 6 divided by parentheses x plus 6. Now, if I want to make a table, where is this not defined? This is not defined when the denominator equals 0. The denominator, x plus 6, equals 0 at negative 6. So I'm going to take my table to be a little bit less than negative 6, maybe negative 8, and count by 1. If I look at my table now, we can see that I'm negative on this side. And negative 6, of course, I don't have a value, and I'm positive on this side. If I set a window, this window will not work for this one. Let's go negative 10 to 5. That sounds good. Uh, counting by 2s. And let's again do negative 20 to 20. If I hit a graph, here's my graph right here. This right here is negative 6. Remember, I'm counting by 2s. So this is negative 6. There's my vertical asymptote. Notice that it is positive, okay, after negative 6, and it's negative below negative 6. Now, there are some questions on the homework that ask this. When does this equal 6? So when is 6 equal to 6 over x plus 6? Well, a couple of ways you could do that. You can think about this and say, well, for this to be equal to 6 over 6, I would need 6 over 1 to be equal to 6 over x plus 6. Well, that means that x plus 6 would have to equal 1, and that, of course, happens at negative 5. Okay, got just solving this. So where does it equal 6? When x equals negative 5. Now, if you look at that, if that's where it equals 6, then it's below 6, okay? Um... It's below 6 everywhere else, except for, so if I want to say where does this equal 6, I'm going to go over here to my graphing calculator and show you how to do that. I'm going to hit y equals y2. I'm going to make y2 equal to 6, and I'm going to graph. And here's the line y2 equals 6, and it equals 6 right at this point at negative 5. But it's below this. Oh, when you're greater than negative 5, so it's less than 6. So the function is less than 6 when x is greater than negative 5 and also when x is less than negative 6. And it's greater than 6, well, between negative 6 and negative 5. So between negative 6 and negative 5. So that's just kind of an interesting problem. I hope you have found this video useful.